Unboxing show KO. Julian Holland's career continues to go from strength to strength. The 25-year-old has developed nicely over the past few years to a stage where he is now set to break into the international pitcher. Possessing tremendous speed and developing power, his latest victim, Kiwi Sam Akuso, proved no match. And a nice short right hand there from Holland. A beautiful counter punch coming back with a left hook. That caught the attention of the Kiwi. Holland probing with the jab. Oh, and a beautiful left hook followed by a right hand. And that seemed to stun the Kiwi Akuso. Sent him back on his heels. Julian Holland undefeated in 15 professional bouts. 14 wins, one draw, seven KOs. Oh, a nice left rip to the body there by the young Australian champion. Holland also the owner of the Queensland State Welterweight title. She won in a great battle from uh, Dindo Kanoi. Nice right hand there from Holland. Catches Akuso on the inside. Nice uppercut by Holland. Didn't quite land flush, but uh, nonetheless a good scoring punch for him. Akuso there really chopping with the right hand. Akuso there digging to the body with the left hook. Holland there coming back with his own left, and I think that might have momentarily stunned Akuso. He was once again back on his heels. There's the jab of Holland, nagging away with it. He is the current New Zealand junior middleweight champ. And a nice right hand there from Holland, snaps back the head of Akuso, follows it up with a good left hook, and he has Akuso backed into his own corner. Nice right hand once again, two right hands, and Akuso looks to be once again in a spot of bother here in the third round. Holland there leading with the right hand and it finds its mark. Working well to the body on that occasion, Holland there coming back with lefts to the head. Right hands to the head, then digging to the body. Giving his opponent no room to breathe whatsoever is Julian Holland. As he has Akuso backed into his own corner now. The New Zealander really having no answer at all to the hand speed or the power of the Australian welterweight champion. Holland there leading with the right and really landing at will is Julian Holland. So very lazy there with the right. Perhaps a little bit intimidated. And Holland there just counters him beautifully with the right hand. And he really is a class above the Kiwi. He's barely landed a punch on Holland as Julian lands another left hand, follows it up with a left rip to the body. So very much on the back pedal now. Holland rips to the body once again with lefts. Also once again missing with the left hand. It's almost like he's resigned himself to defeat. Looking very fatigued. As the time ticks down here in the fourth. Holland taking his time. Some people might say he's a little bit too patient. And there's that short right hand counter from Julian Holland. And Akuso there back into the neutral corner taking right hands. The referee must be looking very carefully at him. Holland showing good defensive skills on that occasion. Blocking both those punches very easily from the Kiwi. Nice uppercut there from Holland on the inside. And once again the Kiwi is backed along the ropes and the referee Thank goodness, he waves it over. So it's a fifth round TKO to Julian Holland. And how far away can a world rating and those world title aspirations must be now? Probably 12 to 18 months away for the young Queenslander.
And really, Ray, uh, he was a class above the Kiwi Akuso, wasn't he? Yeah, he certainly looks the goods, uh, Julian Holland. He improves with every fight, and uh, I believe he has uh, challenged Jeff Malcolm, who's rated number seven with the WBA for Ray Cordy's title. And I think he would be an excellent chance of defeating Jeff Malcolm. Yeah, he has matured very nicely as a fighter over the last 12 months. I noticed earlier in his career he tended to cruise when he was like on top in the fight. Mm -hmm. But we see there against Akuso, he was able to lift that notch and go on and knock, the, knock his opponent out. Yeah, that's, as with experience, he's just improving with every fight, Matthew. And uh, I think he's going to go on to big things. And there, of course, there is also talk of him fighting Shannon Taylor. I don't know whether he's really keen on that fight at this stage. He says he just wants to take his time before he puts himself into those big battles, which is good thinking. Yeah, I wouldn't rush into a fight with Shannon Taylor. He's certainly a very big puncher, Shannon Taylor. Uh, you know, give him another 12 months. We'll see where he's at. Also appearing on the card was undefeated Kiwi Carl Meeham, the 28-year-old who sparred with Joe Bugner prior to his recent showdown against Bob Mirovic, is a fighter to watch in the heavyweight division. Here we go for round one of this heavyweight contest. Carl Meeham in the black and white trunks and Paul Baker in the solid black trunks with a white trim around the waist. Meeham, 28 years of age. He's undefeated in five fights. Three of those have ended by KO. And in his last fight, he looked very impressive in defeating James Grimmer. The knockout victory. A lanky Kiwi. Paul Baker, 30 years of age. He's had 17 fights, seven wins. Just three KOs to his name. Mark Erickson believes Meeham is one of the best heavyweight prospects in Australasia for quite some time. Has been sparring with Joe Bugner. We don't no doubt be sparring with him in the build-up to his fight with James Bone Crusher Smith. And a good left hook there from Meeham catches the attention of Baker. And that ramrod jab of his and another left hook. And Baker already feeling the power of his young Kiwi opponent. He too is from the land of the long white cloud. <laughs> and a right hand catches Baker. And he's swallowing punches every time that Carl Meeham throws a punch. Baker is swallowing the punch. Baker looking a little bit soft around the waist. Meeham having a, both the height and reach advantage over his opponent. Baker there wild, sorry, Meeham wild there with the right hand on that occasion. again catches Baker on oh, a right hand and that sent him down he's down in the neutral corner Paul Baker will take an eight count from the referee and does he want to continue no it's all over so Carl Meehan has scored his second successive KO Paul Baker the recipient on this occasion he now improves to six fights, six wins, and four of those have ended inside the distance. And Meeham, definitely a developing talent there. Ray, why do you think it is that in Australia and basically throughout Australasia, we haven't had too many good heavyweights in a long time? Uh, I just think that, you know, basically we haven't got that many big guys in Australia. And, uh, and that's probably the reason. You know, some of our um, some of the guys that have held the, the heavyweight title have actually been middleweights. You look at Dave Sands, went on to win the uh, the heavyweight title. Also Tony Mundine, but uh, but Carl Meehan looks uh, he looks very good, and uh, I think he'd be an excellent match for Joe Bugner right now. And talking about Joe Bugner, he's got his big WBF fight against James Bone Crusher Smith. You can't knock Joe Bugner, but it's hard to see that fight being an attractive one. 
Uh, oh, yeah, I think, well, you know, you look at um, George Foreman and you see the crowds that he attracts and the attention he gets. And, you know, Bone Crusher has been the heavyweight champion of the world, one of the few fighters that go the distance with Mike Tyson when he was knocking them all out. And Joe Bugney, you can't knock, he's been in there with Joe Frazier and, and Muhammad Ali and gone the distance with him. I think there, will, there could be some interest in that. OK, all right. Well, this is Australia's only boxing show. We'll be back to wrap up right after this break. Bank Trophy with Australia's best shooting for netball's ultimate prize. Friday night live at 8, catch the Adelaide Thunderbirds and the Sydney Swifts. And at 9.30, the Melbourne Kestrels and the Queensland Firebirds. Sports Australia, your netball network. Can Michael Jordan and the Bulls take the championship for the fifth time in seven years? Who will stop them? Shaq and the Lakers, Stockton, Malone and the Jazz, or maybe Robbins and Duncan and the Spurs. We'll find out when the NBA Conference semifinals begin. Saturday, 10 a.m. live on ESPN Channel 11. South Wales Club Rugby, exclusively live from three, we go to Granville Park for the clash between Parramatta and Moringa. The Rats and the Two Blues, exclusively live Saturday from three on Sports Australia 2, Channel 14. Sports Australia has a fistic feast coming your way over the next seven days. Fight Night Replay gives you one last chance to see what was voted the heavyweight clash of 1997, the WBC intercontinental title fight between David Tua and I. I. B. Ibushi. That's Sunday from 12 midnight. Super Bouts is an oldie but a goodie. It's the clash for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world between Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Leonard. That's Sunday from 12.30 p.m. Eastern. While next week on Fight Night, it's the WBO Junior Featherweight Showdown between Junior Jones and Kennedy McKinney. The show also includes Kevin Kelly defending his WBU Featherweight Crown. That's Tuesday from 10 p.m. Check guides for other times. And don't forget that for all the latest news on the fight game, to get the latest edition of the World of Boxing for just 4 bucks 50 it's a must-read for all true boxing fans. And Ray, on the cover there, we see Kostya Zoo dismantling Calvin Grove. It was a great performance by him. Yeah, yes, Matthew, it was Zoo at his best, and he seems that he'll go on to another world title. Well, Ray, thank you very much for joining me. My pleasure, Matthew. That's about all we have time for, so until next week, take it easy and bye for now.